hi viewers welcome to t4e tutorials and this is a tutorial on ILS landing or we call or what we call automatic landing in this landing um, you know who, those who are familiar with FSX uh, can know that uh, the most challenging task while flying a flight is the landing and if it is done automatically then it's 100 percent safe uh, we too have no much tensions so in this tutorial i'll be teaching you how to make an ILS landing or an automatic landing um, ILS landing is something which um, which is done by the flight automatically with the help of its navigator the runway which has an ILS uh, localizer it will be having a frequency which we will uh, copy into our flights navigator and then the flight will automatically land right now I'll just run through what the status of the flight is we are now on um, 4000 feet height our heading is 245 speed current uh, current speed is 251 knots and we are flying from Tokyo we are from fl flying from Narita International to Tokyo International and I'll c I have just paused the simulation just to explain you what the status is I'm continuing with the simulation So uh, this is what the controller has told us. Uh, they have asked us to turn right heading 305, design and maintain 3000, cleared ILS runway 34 right approach, maintain 3000 until established on the localizer, contact Tokyo Tower on 118.1. So uh, what the runway which they have given us is the 34 right before if we are running through the history of ATC here we can see that they have asked us they have asked for the runway to be landed and we have acknowledged the uh, the runway to be landed so here they have asked us to land on 34 right and maintain 3000 until established on the localizer so right now I'm reducing the altitude to 3000 feet and as we are approaching I'm reducing the speed to 220 knots so altitude set to 3000 speed set to 220 knots and they have asked us to turn to 305 so I'm setting the heading as 305 everything is hold already if you don't know how to take off or taxi your flight you can watch my previous tutorials in which I have explained it and I have set the heading as 315 now I'm continuing with the simulation so now the flight is turning to 315 Tokyo Tower, Boeing, November 737 Whiskey is 23 miles southeast inbound ILS, runway 34, right approach Boeing, November 737 Whiskey, Tokyo Tower fly straight in, runway 34, right altimeter 29 Acknowledge the pattern and restriction. Make straight in, runway 34, right, Boeing 37, Whiskey. So, I'm pausing the simulation once again. Let us see what. How, now, I'll be teaching you how to set your navigator. Um, for that, 
let us bring the 2d cockpit view this is a 2d cockpit view we want to bring it by pressing shift a and now let's see the map here we can see the icon display or hide map this button click on that and the map will be displayed here is the map and here you can see the airport to which we are flying we can press this plus sign to zoom in here if you are moving your cursor to the edge you can see an arrow mark now move the map onto the airport and remember the ATC instruction they have asked us to land to on 3-4 right runway here is the flight here is the flight and uh, here you can see if you are zooming in you can see two green lines like this these green lines indicate the lock laser uh, and such green lines tells us that the runway which uh, which is holding these green lines have the ILS lock laser so right right now we have to find the three four right runway from this you can see three lines in total and uh, if if I'm placing my pointer on one green line they will show what runway is that now this is three four left as written in the box ILS slash DME three four left so move your cursor onto the next one and you can see that it's uh, three four right runway cat the I I I L S D M E three four right so I'm clicking on it and clicking on it will give the information about the runway here it is uh, it's a type of ILS, ILS runway and the frequency is 108.90 megahertz so this is the one which you have to keep in mind 108.90 megahertz remember that 108.90 megahertz click OK coming back to the cockpit view open the radio um, radio stack here it is the second button from the right the height display slash height radio stack clicking on it and here's the radio stack I'm enlarging it just for your convenience the first two rows are the communication channel so no need of touching that what we have to change is the navigation channel here is the nav one and here we are we will be setting our ILS frequency in this and the flight will take us automatically onto the one way here you can see two displays one is active and the other one is standby we cannot change the value in the active plot but we can change it in the standby so I'm changing it uh, by just clicking on the left side to the frequency is 108.90 so I'm setting it as 108.90 like this so now it's set the frequency is set as 108.90 now pressing this button in the center will exchange the values between active and standby which means that now the value which was there in the active has gone to the standby and the value in the standby has come to active it's now 108.90 the active and our radio part is set close it by clicking it once again or you can simply press um, sorry shift 2 you can press shift 2 to bring the radio stack now let us continue the flying by pressing continuing simulation once we are near the runway you can press the approach button this is the approach button as we have set the frequency in the radio stack now we can press the approach button and now just look at the autopilot uh, plot all the uh, heading select altitude select everything is on once the flight finds the lock laser it's established on that this altitude hold button as well as the heading hold selector will get off which means that from that moment onward the flight will automatically navigate into the runway it will align automatically to the runway and then land automatically nothing should be done 
what we have to do is just reduce the speed of the flight and as we are approaching let us increase the flaps to 5 or maybe to 10 yeah the heading select is off now which means that our flight has found the localizer now it's aligning itself onto the runway it will be aligning automatically I'm not doing anything let me see let you can see that the flight is banking to sides just to align onto the runway and you can here you can see a light glowing below G slash S which means the flight is now below the glide slope and glide slope is the flight is the height of the flight uh, uh, from which it can uh, glide into the runway without the engine power right now it's below the glide slope once the flight reaches above the glide slope the altitude hold selector will get off and then the flight will automatically descend onto the runway so this is something which is like tension free nothing should be nothing have to be done by us everything will be done by the flight automatically I'm not doing anything I'm just just switch it off just switch it on the approach and everything is now done by the runway sorry done by the flight I'm increase I'm reducing the fl uh, flight speed to 180 knots and I mean I'm just deploying the brake by pressing shift plus slash I'm just giving a half brake which means that the speed will be reduced a little bit too I'm retracting the brake we're just increasing the flaps to 15 as we are landing and whenever as, as we are approaching the runway here you can see the runway the way now the altitude hold selector is off which means that now our flight will descend automatically onto the runway one main thing which you have to keep in mind is that if you are flying with the G, uh, GPS mode switch on uh, what you have to do is switch it back to nav before you press the approach button now my switch is in nav so no need of changing it if it is like if it is in GPS mode just switch it back to nav and then press the approach button or else the flight will not fly automatically on onto the runway As we are approaching, we can just reduce the speed to 170 knots, and also increase the flaps to 25. You can see the runway over here, and my flight is flying onto the runway. It has aligned properly onto the runway. No worries, nothing. Have given us the clearance to land. I've acknowledged the clearance. Everything is fine. Before you land, just increase the auto brake auto brake switch. I'm, sw I'm switching it to two. You can increase according to your wish. As we are approaching the runway, press G and put your landing gears down. I will tell you one more tip you can see four lights next to the runway like this here are the lights two of them are now white and two of them are red which means that our flight is in the correct height 
if now look it's like three of them are white and one is at red which means that our flight is now a little above the desired altitude we are approaching the runway so um, now it's time to disengage the autopilot we have touched down so now disengage the autopilot i have it by pressing z switch off the auto throttle press switch off everything and now apply reverse thrust by pressing pressing and holding f2 now the reverse thrust is on have landed very safely now the controller has asked us to exit the runway so just now increase the throttle little So this is what the ILS landing is. Everything is very simple. What we have to do is get the ILS frequency from the map. Uh, pay, uh, just set it in your nav but nav radio stack, and then press the approach button once you are near the runway. Rest everything will be done by the flight. What you have to take care is of the flaps, the speed, your uh, your auto brake, and the landing gear. So have a nice flight if you have any doubts just comment below the video and i'll help you i'll try to make a video on what you have told or uh, i'll just comment and give you the reply for or the solution for your problem and from the next tutorial you will be seeing about pmdg and gax which is an interesting add-on for the fsx thank you have a nice flight